So we've just been kicked out by the unions for filming inside. But now we're just going to film all the interviews out here um, and annoy them from across the street. Triggered. Spicy! We're just outside the Hilton Hotel here in San Francisco. Uh, we've come outside from the BCH DevCon Hackathon, which is ongoing at the moment. And I'm here joined by George Hotz. He's the infamous hacker, uh, well known for hacking the PS3 nearly 10 years ago now. And also he did the unlocking of the original iPhone and some of the early jailbreaks. Um, and now he's working on Comma AI, the self-driving car toolkit. That was pretty cool. I saw it yesterday and it's basically just a $500 or $600 thing that you put inside your car and install it and you support many different models, is that correct? We, we sell hardware. The software is given away for free for legality reasons. Yeah, I, I bet so. Well, um, let's talk about the cryptocurrency space. So. We want to know what kind of involvement you've had in cryptocurrency up to this point. You said to me yesterday that you'd actually read Ethereum's geth in full, so clearly you've got some kind of interest there with Ethereum. Uh, I don't do anything with crypto. I have no cryptos, no cryptos, but I like reading it because Ethereum's a great, you know, it's a great bug bounty, the whole thing. Not like the bounties, but the whole thing is a bug bounty, you know, because if you like find the exploit, you run the exploit and you get money. Very true. And uh, it's pretty cool that basically these developer groups can send it, they can send it to uh, the people collecting the bounty from wherever they are in the world. Oh, no, so, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the contract itself is the bounty. You don't need the developer. If you hack the contract, you get paid. And it's not even illegal because you're just running code on the Ethereum computer and everyone owns the Ethereum right, computer. I get what you're saying now. So anyhow, um, well, with all the ICOs and development going on uh, in Solidity on Ethereum itself, we've noticed that it's uh, not been able to handle this kind of increased load. Do you think that, um, well, are they going to be able to overcome this problem uh, to effectively scale Ethereum for a global kind of usage? This is mostly a myth. Really, only Bitcoin has scaling issues. Um, Ethereum has scaling issues when like CryptoKitties happens, but the truth is nobody uses any dApps for anything. That's true, at this point in time, uh, we're always asking these token boys, like, what's your favorite dApp? Or, and they, they're not even able to tell us a single dApp that uh, they enjoy the most, because, yeah, there are none, really. Um, so, on to BTC. Of course, you just said it's the only one that's got the scaling issues at this point in time, really. Uh, so, do you think that BTC's Lightning Network is an appropriate solution for scaling Bitcoin for global adoption? Well, to be honest, I don't even really know anymore. I just know that at one point in my life, I paid $17 for a Bitcoin transaction. And that does kind of stick with you. Um, I don't know, Lightning looks complicated and like it doesn't work. I, I would agree. Work. I mean, maybe it works. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um, yeah, I don't know. They'd probably tell you that wait another 18 months and, uh, you know, there'll be a final product. But that hasn't happened yet. And it's been a few years time. So then we've got two versions of Bitcoin now. So basically, yeah, we've got the BTC version, which is unable to scale. It doesn't work. And now there's Bitcoin Cash, which is uh, an attempt at returning Bitcoin to its original unrestrained form uh, instead of the new to BTC <laughs> version. So what do you think about Bitcoin Cash? You're here today at the Bitcoin Cash hackathon. That sounded like an argument. A lot of you will make these arguments like appeal to Satoshi or appeal to Vitalik for like why theirs is the true thing. I'm a big fan of, of forks in general. I like forks um, because they allow people a voice without having to take anyone else's voice away. I like that. Um, and well, basically, yeah, Bitcoin Cash is a fork. Uh, the chain split last year and now that's what a certain group of people are doing. Um, they weren't happy with the direction of where things were going and they uh, took it, they took back control into their own hands, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of forks. Because you know why? When you have a coin and that coin forks, you now have two coins. It's like two chains, but coins. Indeed. Well, we'll go back into the hackathon after this question, but 
Tell us a bit more about what you're working on right now. I saw you were hard, hard at work on the computer just before. What are you building over the next two days here at the hackathon? Uh, is it a specific idea that you think Bitcoin Cash is going to be able to fulfill better than other cryptocurrencies, or what's the deal? Oh, I don't know. I'm just I'm looking at the script language. I like languages. I like doing clever things with things. Excellent. Well, hopefully. Um, you make it into one of the winning prizes, we'll see what you can do. I love prizes. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on here, man. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Cheers. Coinspice over and out.